Justin Trudeau and Jugmeet Singh drop a new bombshell as to whether or not we're going to see a spring election. Is it over with their coalition? Let's get into it. Oh, yeah. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to The Fringe. The weekends usually aren't a time where we share a lot of information or a lot of news stories because there really isn't a lot happening. But this weekend, um, Jagmeet Singh going into his weekend to talk a little bit about his pharma care deal with the liberals. And of course, he's been threatening for quite some time that if this deal did not go through, he was going to sever and break his ties with the liberal government when uh, when it comes to any hopes of us seeing a spring election. Now, news came out late yesterday uh, as to the state of that agreement with Justin and Jagmeet, and we're going to get into that. But before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit on this video about our newest sponsor, Funnable Friends. Huge shout out to this video sponsor, Funnable Friends. After a long day of looking at the world and what goes on around it, especially with this guy, You'll forgive me if I don't think about monetary policy. Uh, you'll understand that I think about families. I definitely need a calming distraction. And that's why I'm here today to talk to you about a new YouTube channel called Funnable Friends. This channel happens to be just what the doctor ordered to help take your stress away. We're talking clumsy puppies, hilarious cat fails, and hours of clean, family-appropriate entertainment. What is more is they are a grassroots channel volunteering and promoting local Alberta charities, including the fostering of a cute puppy through Fostering Hope in Red Deer, Alberta. There's no cost to view the content with a portion of earnings from the channel going to assist in the well-being of future animals in need. So if you feel the need to forget about the latest political drama in your life for a while, subscribe to Funnable Friends. The stories of those lives of animals getting turned around is sure to brighten your day, and out of our lives and the chaos that continues in it, we could sure all afford a few minutes out of our lives to be a little more funnable. Link is down below in the description. You know, when it comes to funnable friends, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I absolutely love this channel. I think they're fantastic. Um, you'd be doing me a huge favor if you go over there and subscribe. If you want to see some funny cat and dog videos, uh, and support a good cause. Keep in mind, like I said in the ad, they donate a portion of their money from the views to assisting in the fostering of animals, giving animals a better life. It costs you virtually nothing but a click of your mouse and uh, any of your free time if you want to have a laugh and be entertained. So head on over, show them some love, tell them the Fringe sent you. And um, other than that, let's get into today's story because God knows we could have deserved a laugh or a little bit of a break from politics, but... Jagmeet Singh coming out to disclose that the Liberals and the NDP have reached a deal on Pharmacare. Is this really any big surprise? I mean, look, Justin Trudeau's polling numbers have been in the toilet. We've known this for quite some time. And we knew that if this deal was severed, this would essentially lead into an automatic spring election that Jugmeet would have to see the writing on the wall and uh, move forward with uh, Pierre Polyev to, I guess, dethrone Justin Trudeau from the from the prime minister's seat. Now, I wanted to get into the specifics here because don't lose hope yet thinking that um, the possibility of a spring election is out the window. And we're going to get into that a little bit later. But let's take a look at the deal that was reached. It says here that the Liberals and NDP have reached a deal to table Pharmacare framework legislation, quelling the back and forth from recent months that uh, failure to reach an agreement on the issue could part or put the party's confidence and supply agreement at risk. NDP leader Jugmeet Singh confirmed the development to CTV News on Friday or the prostitutes uh, calling draft legislation historic. I highly doubt that. Like, it's not historic. It was, um, <laughs> what, what, what do we call it? Um, not coercion, but um, I guess um, he, he kind of muscled them into it. Uh, I can proudly say that not only do we have legislation that specifically refers to single payer, uh, but that refers to Canada Health Act and the principles and values. We also have secured commitments to delivering diabetes medication and contraceptives using single-payer public models, Singh told CTV's question period. Um, Vasi Capellios in an interview airing Sunday. So essentially he extorted Justin Trudeau <laughs> by threatening an election. Uh, Singh said he's confident Canadians can expect coverage for diabetes medication and contraceptives, quote, very quickly. 
they got to work on that population control. Uh, but when pressed on whether liberals have promised a specific timeline for the actual implementation of a universal single-payer pharmacare system, more broadly, the NDP leader wouldn't say. Of course not, because they haven't. They've just said, yeah, 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 we'll get it done. Just don't sever, don't sever the deal. Don't separate away from us. A plan for a universal single-payer pharmacare system is part of a confidence and supply agreement between the liberals and the NDP, or as we like to call it, a coalition, because let's call it what it is. Uh, Penn nearly two years ago, the deal sees the NDP prop up the Liberals until 2025 in exchange for progress on certain policy priorities, including pharmacare. Um, it's going to be similar to the dental deal that went through. It's going to go nowhere. And uh, this really isn't a win for anybody. The NDP had signaled the March 1st deadline set for the Liberals to table pharmacare framework legislation could be its red line with Singh warning in early February that he'd put the prime minister on notice over the issue. Both Singh and Ann McGrath, a senior NDP official um, and one of the lead negotiators for the Confidence and Supply Agreement Coalition, said they would interpret a missed deadline as the Liberals walking away from their deal. Singh said while he hasn't secured a hard deadline for implementing Pharmacare, which the Parliamentary Budget Officer estimates would cost about $11 billion a year. $11 billion. We now know why Christian Freeland extended um, the debt ceiling for Canada's, uh, borrowing, right? She went up to 57, uh, 57, um, or 500 and some odd billion, sorry, 11 billion a year. The NDP has laid out the foundation for its legislation. And beyond that, it will be an ongoing battle. Some provinces, namely Quebec and Alberta, have said they're likely to opt out of a national pharmacare program if given the option. Meanwhile, others, such as New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, say they want to hear the details of the plan before saying whether or not they're in favor. When asked why we would push the federal government into drafting a national pharmacare program without first consulting provinces, Singh said he sees similarities when universal health care was legislated. No, the reason they want to do it is because there's something shady and snaky going on with it, and they don't want to, you know, show their show their magic trick before uh, before people have a chance to find out where the wires are for themselves. Provinces balked at the idea of universal health care. No different, he said. It took time. It took negotiating, it took provinces stepping up and agreeing, and then other provinces followed suit. So again, we're not really going to see any progression on this. So while Jugmeet calls it a win, it certainly is nothing more than pillow talk. And we all know how much Jugmeet loves Justin Trudeau's pillow talk. Uh, but when pressed on why the federal government should invest in a new system instead of uh, improving the existing one, considering the challenges of the country's health care system and in particular significant wait times and staffing shortages, Singh said, we need to do all of it. Well, that's not how it works. You can't just snap your fingers. We absolutely need to believe we need to do both, he said. And I don't ex accept at all for a second that we can't do both. We can and we must. I mean, it's just, it's word salad. There's nothing beneficial to this for anybody other than Jugmeat touting his own horn saying, look what I did, everybody. I'm going to make it look like I did something. But in reality, nothing was accomplished. Nothing's been done other than a couple of words. There's no pen to ink. There's no contract in place. There's, there's nothing. Um, now, when I say that this doesn't really douse any qualms about a spring election, again, Pierre Polyev, I believe, has been in campaign mode for weeks We've seen it with his press conferences. We've seen him get more aggressive. We've seen Jugmeat making threats. We've seen even Trudeau sitting on podcasts, taking interviews, going around to different parts of the country, again, even to Alberta, to, to mock their government for not wanting to work with them despite not informing them that he was even in Alberta. Um, <laughs> they're all kind of in this campaign mode. And I do believe, again, that the, there's a very high possibility we could still see a spring election. Now, many people will say, well, Derek, They've already signed the agreement they're, they're, they've agreed to this. Why would we see a spring election at this point? Well, I think, again, if things don't move fast enough, you're going to see a lot of angst within the NDP party, pressure on Jugmeet Singh. And not only that, don't forget his party can actually oust him if they actually get fed up enough. We might get to a point where if you look at uh, the past history in parliaments, when you look back to um, today's like Jean Chrétien or even Paul Martin, people cross the floor sometimes. There's all kinds of things that could happen in order to reach some form uh, of a, a, an early election or a spring election. And I still do believe that it's on the table. Time's going to tell. I know people are going to say I'm wrong, but 
this is where we're at. And I felt that it's good to at least let you guys know as soon as this news dropped that this was, uh, this is what's happening. This is what they're claimed to have happening. But again, I've always been told in the business world, nothing is anything until you've got it in writing. And of course we know they don't have that done yet. So time is of the essence and time will tell what is going to happen in this country. But either way, Justin Trudeau and Jugmeet Singh's time is very limited regardless of what happens, uh, whether we see an election now or in 2025. But let me know what you guys think down below. Are you shocked that this deal went through? Uh, make sure to comment, like, subscribe, get it out in the algorithm. Again, ladies and gentlemen, Justin Trudeau doesn't like us talking negative about him. He wants to silence us because he gets hurt feelings whenever uh, people say things that he doesn't like. So make sure to do all the usual YouTube stuff. If it's your first time here, I hope the video has earned your subscription. Make sure as you're clicking that button, join us live on the channel every Friday night for Friday Night Fringe, where we go over everything that's happened during the week, everything coming up in the week ahead, and some back and forth with the community. We had a great stream this last Friday, and I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in those streams and hearing what you guys have to say outside of this video. I hope you guys have yourselves a great weekend and enjoy what little time off you can. If you're getting time off, I'll catch you on the next one. Take care, everybody.